welcome to this uh, APMG Midday Mentors. Uh, today, our guest is uh, Danie Danielle Hellenbrand. Is it the right pronunciation, Danielle? <laughs> welcome, Danielle. Thank you, Thank you for having me. <laughs> Danielle works as an executive coach, columnist, and international keynote speaker at Better Brains at Work. She's interested in applying neuroscience discoveries to building corporate relationships, coaching, and leadership. She encourages people to make practical use of what is known about the brain to create more brain-wise and inspiring workplaces. Mm -hmm. Well, just for this, Danielle, I need you and your skills and your expertise because I need to know why is it important for us right now to know more about the brain? Yes, we are. Well, especially in times like this, you know, it's important to know a little bit how the brain works, to know what's going on inside of yourself during these times of crisis and what's going on emotionally with other people. And, you know, crises are crises because they affect people. And, you know, to be honest, in the beginning, I had this feeling of, you know, a blissful um, a, a ease inside myself. You know, it was like um, I was taken out of the red race for a while. But now we start to see what the consequences are, you know, economically and socially. Now it's a whole other thing. Um, and, you know, all those feelings that we have, we have to know that they can exist side by side. We can have feelings of anxiety and grief uh, and at the same time feel joy and gratitude, you know. Um, and all those feelings are very ambiguous. I, on one hand, I have this feeling of peace inside of me sometimes. But on the other hand, I think it's very difficult to be with my child and my partner 24-7 in the house, you know. <laughs> um, having all these different feelings at the same time. And sometimes I'm very, very, very anxious. But at the same time, I can look in the mirror and think my hair has a crisis too, you know, I miss my hairdresser. So all these feelings, we have, we, we can have them side by side. And what makes it hard on us is we are human beings, we are social beings, we need each other to see each other face to face with all of our senses. That is why I would like to talk with you today about the way we try to deal with combining work and family and the insecurities during quarantine. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. impact has this lockdown on us as human beings, on our private life and our work life? Yeah, exactly. There are challenges in our work life, and but also in our private life, you know. We humans are first and foremost social beings. And in our daily life, we have a lot of roles. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a mother, I am a partner, um, I am a business owner, I do my coachings. We have all those roles, and those roles took place in several um, uh, spaces. I went out to see my friends for dinner. I went to work, my kid went to school. But now all those roles are taking place from one space for a lot of people, the bedroom or the kitchen table. You know, all those things we do at the same time. And some people are used to work from home, like you at APMG. You know, I met your colleagues in Germany and at the Benelux office several times. And what fascinates me is how you manage to keep this team spirit, you know, this feeling of togetherness alive. So you all are used to work from home. A lot of people aren't. And now we don't work from home, we work with home, with all those things that are going on at the same time. You know, I had my coaching. I was doing a, a, a coaching. Um, my son needed me for his homework. My dog was ill and puked next to me. You know, all those things are going on at the same time. It is this amalgamation of all of those roles. Some people are lonely and some people are too much in each other's space. So, you know, we all have these uh, different kind of feelings and we have to live with prolonged insecurity and people are not good at this, not good at this, um, living in such distressed situations. And last week I had the opportunity to talk with several psychologists and psychiatrists and what we see now, which is of big concern, we see a lot of loneliness, especially amongst elderly people, you know, and there is a difference of feeling lonely or being for yourself for a few hours. I like that. I love that. We see a lot of more alcohol abuse, drug abuse. We see domestic violence and we talk in the media a lot of, of uh, about our physical health. But we also have to watch our mental health, you know. Mental health is crucial for overall health and well-being. 
And as the uh, Esther Perel puts it so beautifully, the quality of our relationships determine the quality of our life. And it's equally so that the quality of our relationships at work determine the quality of our life at work and our success. Um, and we have to deal with all the things that are going on in normal life, plus the added huge experience of being in this global crisis with prolonged uncertainty. Nobody really knows where this is going. And some cope with this rational, other emotional, you know, everybody in his own way. Um, but fortunately, we now have the technique that makes it possible for us to connect with each other. But what impact does it have on us to just stay in touch with our colleagues through our screen? Mm -hmm. How are we going to interact when this is over? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting question, Yara, because I spoke with uh, a few people about that last week about what are we going to do when we're going back to normal? <laughs> was it normal, you know, the way we lived our lives? There was also so much loneliness and, and, and greed and a rat race and, and insecurity and inequity. Do we want to return to that, you know? Maybe we should use this opportunity to create a world that fits both us, human and nature. And thank God we have this possibility to connect with each other with our devices. And, you know, as, I, as you said, I'm also a columnist and I write a lot about how these devices can, you know, um, d let us drift apart in family life. But now it's the thing that connects us. However, all these Zoom calls, all these group calls, um, we know now that it's. TV is looking back all the time. You know, you cannot let your mind wander. Um, you have to perform kind of all the time. What's also very stressful is you see yourself all the time in these Zoom calls. You and now you see yourself on screen. And that is stressful for a lot of people. Uh, we also know that a delay of one or two uh, seconds can make us perceive the responder as less friendly or, or less focused. Um, that is wh why I, at the moment, prefer uh, phone calls with my clients. You know, then I close my eyes, I look, I hear their voice, I listen very carefully to the words they use to describe a situation. Um, so I do think we are going to have more and more interactions via screen. But we are human beings and we need each other to feel and see each other, um, you know, face to face and live. Yeah. But what could you recommend people to support themselves and others? Can you walk us through some coping mechanisms? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good question, because we have to look at ourselves and uh, to other people, because you, our brain is a social organ and we need we need other people. So try to stay connected. Um, but the longer the crisis lasts, the more it is difficult to stay pro-social because when we have stress, we do not very helpful things. Uh, some people are better equipped for that than others. I think we are all doing our best and there is no one size fits all, Kiara. When I see all those uh, websites with three steps to, there are no three steps, you know, you are you, I am I, and we all do the best we can in our own way. But there are some things that are helpful, you know, to start at the beginning, shower, get dressed properly and have a breakfast. You know, in psychology, we call that self-care. And I know I've, I, I thought it was uh, relaxing to be in my pajamas and, and, you know, jogging pants for a few days. But you don't feel well if you do that. It's also not good for the people you are with in the household. And, you know, when I have business calls, like now, I'm wearing high heels. You know, the heels give me this business mindset, you know, they're not comfortable, who invented them anyway, but it gives me this mindset, you know, but, you know, the question was, how do we stay uh, resilient in these times of crisis? You'll have some structure in the day, uh, eat well, we all know that, try to sleep well, try to stay connected to other people, bite your tongue now and then when you are 24 seven in the same house with a lot of people. Um, um, take time for yourself, walk, go outside, if it is possible. <laughs> Poor you, I know, but I can go outside, we can go outside. So, and you know, um, um, have if, if, to give you an example, in our household, um, oh, I, have a, I have a dog, and uh, all of us are going out with the dog a few times a day. So, 
everybody has the house uh, half an hour for its, for itself. Uh, my partner's uh, in charge of food and beverage. He's doing the things too well. I have another challenge after this uh, crisis. I'm in charge of housekeeping, you know, to get the house cozy, to let the candles, to look that everything is clean. You know, have this kind of structure um, because we're all in this together. And what we need now is mass mutual reliance. That's very important. Um, you know, and what we also all need is that we work with our brain and our hearts. That is what we need, you know. We don't want to go back into that rat race. And uh, last but not least, I think we should use the time for educating ourselves, you know. The world will look different after this. And there are so many chances now you find in the internet to qualify yourself. You know, online training in a virtual classroom room has never been so easy. And also online exams are robust and they are stable like never before. So I think you just have to check all the offerings that are there and educate yourself. Many thanks, Danielle. You're welcome, Chiaro. It's my pleasure.